Mickey made it. Mickey made it. What you made, Mickey? Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy, Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you got to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. I'm just trying to build a new brand with the community and just something original for you to add to your closet. Okay, today's episode is very important that I just really wanted to bring to you guys. And before I jump into this episode, I first seen this um, interview on Choke No Joke's channel. He was doing a reaction to it and just giving his take on it. So I figured, you know what? I really wanted to add something to it and give you my take on this whole situation and this whole ditty and ditty parties and just the victims of this whole situation. So we're going to jump into it and I want you guys to know when it comes to this whole Diddy situation in this case, a lot of content creators out there, I see some people, you know, they're on the side for the good and they're waiting to see the proper information before they present it. Then you have other content creators. I see so many people online, you, you know, it's hard to differentiate who's who but there's a lot of demon energy out there and they just they more want to point out the wrongs and the victims that's lying instead of just concentrating on the facts and the reason why Diddy, Sean Combs, Love or whatever you want to call him ended up in this place he is right now. It's not about race. It's, this is all about the people that he took advantage of was scared to come to the front and some of them did come to the forefront, but they were being silenced because of the noise of all this negativity that I tell you. Negativity travels fast, and the louder they talk, they want to talk over the facts. So let's jump into it, see what she has to say. You guys give me your take and how you feel about this whole situation. And we could chop it up on my morning show, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. live. Let's get it. So he ended up telling me, like, when we went to Club Live, he was like, guess where we're going tonight? I'm like, where? He's like, to P. Diddy's house. I'm like, oh, really? I'm like, that's crazy because I hear a lot about P. Diddy. And I'm like, his house for what? Like, to go sing? He's like, no, he's throwing this wild party. Da -da -da. I'm like, oh, okay. So we went from Club Live. It ended at, like, the clubs end at, like, three or four. And not two, like, how out here. And real quick, before we go any further, I just want to let you guys know, this is the reason why it's always good to know how to read people and stop looking at people from how they look and just feeling from the heart and what they say. That would give you a better depiction of who that person really is. Because, you know, a lot of people probably would have overlooked her because maybe of her job, maybe because she was a stripper. It doesn't matter if you're a stripper. It doesn't matter what your job title is it gives nobody the right to take advantage of you a lot of times in those jobs that has anything to do with any sexual things a lot of people feel like since you're at the job and you're showing yourself that outside of the job they can do whatever to you and this leads up this ends up into like criminal cases sexual abuse domestic violence and all of these things because people overextend their power whether it's your boyfriend or whether it's somebody higher up or in a position you're trying to get into you cannot let somebody take advantage of you that's all we're saying content creators the ones i see that really putting their heart into it they're good people to me they're you know keeping their straight judgment on how the situation is as far as the evidence or whatever ever's being presented people are taking in and they're judging for as they as it goes along so don't just criticize people it ain't right let's keep going so we waited around the mansion the prince's mansion for about an hour and then soon as 6 30 hit we went we all got in the car like a big uber Facts. and um me and all the other girls. Now, mind you, I'm the only black girl. So, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm about to meet Pete Diddy. Oh, you know, like, I'm probably going to have to sing for him. Da, da, da. And I just tried to, like, keep my composure. So, we get there. And that's when stuff got weird. <laughs> and that's why they lock up our phones. Because they know what we see in there. You know, it's he, he can get in trouble, like, right now. So... Basically, so we arrived, 
security guard patted us down. They put our phone in this little bubble case. So the bubble case is closed. They can't get unlocked until we walk out. So as we're in there, the only way of us taking any type of pictures is if we get in the photo booth. He has like a teen love photo booth or whatever. Take like four pictures. So I, you know, got pictures. I still got everything in my snap too, like of the photos, everything. That's all you could get. So I'm walking around or whatever. So one of his sons, I'm not going to tell you which one, but it was like recruiting like whoever they wanted to go inside the house because the back, the the freak off is inside the house and in the backyard. So you have the pool and they're playing loud house music. Like Mark, the house music, it makes you feel kind of woozy, first of all, because it's like a rave or something. Dun, 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 dun. And it's real loud. So you can't really see nothing, but you're seeing everybody like walking around drunk, hopping around. It's still 7 a.m. So the sun is like coming up and people are walking around naked period let's get into it they're walking around naked already and they're in the pool skinny dipping and they're drinking mimosas in the pool but then it's like a waitress walking around giving people drinks just passing people drinks you know and people are just taking them me i don't drink like that but I'll, i'm like an occasional drinker like i'll drink if we're partying or whatever just for that and real quick, just because people might have it hard, what people go through, people come from struggle, and people are just trying to make it, doesn't give anybody the right to take advantage of somebody. Occasion, so, because people are going to keep saying, drink, drink, drink. But I didn't take a sip a drink of a drink yet. But I just had it in my hand. So one of the sons seen me walking, mind you, I'm with other girls, but we split up. So I was walking with one girl. She's a Puerto Rican girl. So P. Diddy's son was like, you. And I'm like, me? Or her. And then he was like, no, you. Come here. Be so careful, I went to him. And he gave me some shoes. So these shoes was like some um, terry cloth, like robe shoes, white shoes. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? He was like, go in the house with these. He was like, everybody who gets these shoes, you get to go in the house. But I'm thinking you could just go in the house if you want to. But everybody can't go in the house. They're literally selectively picking who they want. So I'm like, well, what about my friend? He was like, no, only you. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm holding the shoes. I'm walking around. You know, I'm a good loyal friend. I'm not going to go inside a house where they said my friend can't go. So we just walking around mingling. But we tripping out, looking at everybody like they off everything smoking and jumping around like hooligans. And so I seen P. Diddy or whatever, and I seen him with the prince. I'm not going to say what he was doing, but something really, I get real nervous. <laughs> something real crazy because I don't like to really expose people. I could talk about me, but when it's about, like me, my family, because it's us. But when it's other people, bro, doing something real sexual, that's all I'm going to say. Um, so that we can see and so that we can get turned on, okay? So he's doing something with himself. And I'm like, <laughs> girl, do you see him? She's like, yes, but mind you, we're screaming like, girl, do you see him? Oh, my God. Because of the music. And I'm just like, whatever. Then he starts to act like really obnoxious. Like, I'm the king of the world. Jumping around, doing all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's regular P. Diddy shit. But what got me was how he walked up to me and was like, why are you not in the house? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, how are you enjoying my house? So... We had a little talk or whatever. He started talking about all these things. Oh, yeah, you're the one that, you know, I seen was telling me about the prince. He's like, um, oh, yeah, um, it's very nice to meet you. Like, your life is not going to be the same. Da -da -da -da. They, we started talking about going to Cuba. Are you going to Cuba with us? I'm like, what? And that's the thing. I didn't really know about this. So this is when I start asking around or whatever. I said that in the last interview. But to get to the point, I ended up going in the house because he was on me, like, going to that house. I'm like, okay. Then the person that he was dating at that time, we're not going to say her name, but we all know, she came and was, like, looking at him like, what are you doing? Because he was talking to me for too long. So she came to, like, rub on his shoulders or whatever, and he just pushed her. And I'm looking, like, real uncomfortable, like, oh, I know what this is about. I don't want to be in the middle of there or whatever. So that's what made me go into the house because I'm like, okay, let me just go in the house. So I told my friend, like, wait right here, girl. Let me just put on these shoes, see what this house is about out of their mind. And you know when people... You know what you don't want to be a part of. And it's just like, I'm seeing stuff that you see on the movies. I'm, this corner, this got going on. This corner, they over here doing this. This corner, they over there having sex. This corner, I'm just going to say, because I don't know what I can say, because I'm not trying to be 
incriminating myself, but they were dressed up like little Harajuku Barbies. Like what? Little people. Okay. We're not going to say what type of little people, but like a fetish. And I'm looking like, what are they doing here? Like dressed up, little um, red lipstick. Like they weren't supposed to be there. But I'm just looking like maybe it's some type of production going on. But why would they be at this party at 7 o'clock in the morning with grown people? Like why Why would they be here? So I was just like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> But then when I'm looking in this corner, this corner, this person laid out. And I'm looking like, what's going on? Diddy parties. Um... Those are those are assault parties, and I was one of the kids that was one of the party favors. And a party favors means that you're set on top of a table, and you're used as a toy for anybody who comes across the table or who wants to party at a certain time of night when the music stops, and then the DJ starts flashing all these lights and they close the doors, and then everybody turns into like a frenzy and starts going into a crazed animal-like demonic state and you have no idea what's going on and yes and god bless her too because it ain't easy telling your story and people not gonna believe you they're not gonna take you in they're gonna look at you like you're somebody what you're doing there how'd you get in there or this and that or whatever it takes for them to camouflage the simple fact that you went into the place where you thought you was going to have fun with celeb celebrities in hollywood or whatever it may be and you've been tricked and the way you turned out in the party it somebody held you back or you felt like you couldn't you had no more power you were powerless because you're stuck your mindset is stuck into what you thought it was and now you're hitting the reality of what it actually is and that can leave a person stuck and in a in a position where they're vulnerable to be hurt or be in a place where they're even drugged and sometimes it could end up even worse than that so healing energy out to you and Thank God you're here, still here to tell your story. There was a time where I was just like completely don't give a shit because it happened. And I was the type of kid that thought that, you know, you're in the presence of royalty and they make it seem like you're in the presence of Hollywood. So you should be you should be honored and you should be appreciating that you're there. And I was that person. I totally acted like that. I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, it really doesn't matter. But then it really did matter when um, my pimp was like he had rules. He had lots of rules, and it was more money. And if you know the difference between a pimp, a John, and a trafficker, the trafficker is the supplier, but the pimp is collecting the money, and the John is doing the buying. So if the pimp is saying that full house, actual, full-blown sex is... It, by the way, kids don't watch this. Goodbye. I love you. Goodbye. I got myself into a situation where I was about to get sex trafficked, and this was like, this was like three years ago. And I was just like, it was a close one. You know, I, I came up on this prince and he was Arabian and he flew me to Miami and he said I was gonna be there for two weeks. We were in a $30 million house and I ended up being there for a month and I had to escape, okay? And we were meeting so many girls and girls from Love and Hip Hop was coming in the house and celebrities was there and all of this stuff. But it started to get real weird. You know, it was a lot of drugs. And like, I don't do hard drugs like that. Like I was smoking weed, you know, and they were doing hard drugs and stuff. And it was just like, it was getting, like my gut was telling me something bad is about to happen. But he was trying to like distract us. We're buying this stuff. We was going shopping and doing all these things. And for some reason, I felt like, like I'm used to getting shit, but like this right here, where am I about to be tomorrow? And why are we still here? So then he says, well, we're going to go to Cuba. So the girls start talking in the house and they're like, girl, I got to get back home. And he said that I can't leave. And I'm like, well, what is he going to do with us? Then, you know, we had went to some celebrities house and we ended up at P Diddy's house and I just started hearing conversations and I just got sex trafficking from it because you know I heard the prince saying something like oh you can have whoever you want like he was like selling us you know so I'm like is this sex trafficking like what the you guys you gotta pay attention to the people that's painting the narrative of Diddy might be innocent or what he did is not that bad or somebody is 
trying to get him or put him in the position listen you guys he did these things to these people and a lot of people have been silenced because of their they don't have enough money to go up against him and just the powers he had in place but when we seen somebody and we seen the video all those things that he had in place to stop these people from coming forward it was done and that's the reason why we seeing what we see and for everybody out there that's just you know I see people moving further away from the victim's side in their own little way and they're just more pointing at the people putting out the right information and they're getting mad at us content creators because we're on the better side or the good side and it makes us look like oh we we're perfect we don't it's not about us being perfect it's about these type of mistakes that people make are detrimental to other people and the more victims that they they build are the more people that's going to be living with these traumas so for those people all I have to say yeah we might not be millionaires but the love that we show and the love that we receive it will last us a million years so you can take that one with you instead of just pointing and looking down on people until next time it's your boy Mickey Fenty aka Mickey made it if you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now.